All right, I have the car in reverse. I'm just gonna tap the, I'm gonna tap the accelerator. Ladies, gentlemen, and of course, everybody in between, welcome back to the Electric Garage. I'm your host, as always, Declan Cav, and this is part two of converting my Electric to lithium iron phosphate. If you haven't seen the first part, go watch it. We built this battery pack in the last episode. Uh, you can see I have done a little bit of off-camera work just with cable organization. That was really boring, so I didn't do it on video. And then uh, I covered a lot of the surfaces with this dielectric tape. Uh, one, to keep all the wires in place, and two, to keep it from shorting against anything. But uh, yeah, this is a very exciting episode because we're going into the process called integration hell, which is basically getting all these parts into the GAR and working together. So uh, the first thing we're gonna do is just put the battery in the car, so let's do that. So my genius plan to get the batteries into the car was first wrapping the bottom set of batteries in electrically isolated paracord, and then me and my brother Quinn would pull from the front of the car through the battery tray to pull the batteries into the car while my brother Liam observed from the back to make sure nothing was getting stuck. And this strategy was working well. Um, it was going in until a catastrophic issue occurred. The battery tray collapsed, and unfortunately I didn't get it on video. This caused me to have to rebuild the entire pack again, uh, but I didn't film it because you've seen it too many times. Fuck you. Luckily, none of the batteries were damaged, so I had no problem rebuilding it. So for a second attempt, I decided to employ a few more people, but it was still too heavy. So this is where we employed the help of a 1980 MGB. So what we did was we created a rig that would push from the front bumper of the MGB and push the batteries into the back of the Electrek. It evenly distributed the weight so nothing got damaged. And you might laugh at it, but it worked. That took forever. That took way longer than I expected it to take. But the batteries are now in the car. And if I ever want to take them out, I'm not going to think about that right now because they're in the car and they're good. So uh, the next step, uh, what I want to do is before I get any of the uh, motor or the controller hooked up or anything like that, I want to get the uh, dash controls all hooked up and the BMS controller under the hood uh, hooked up so that I can monitor the BMS while I connect it to the controller. So what that entails is I need to mount the uh, MCU under the hood. I need to mount um, some of the control stuff that I haven't showed you yet under the hood and I need to mount the charger under the hood. So uh, let me show you what pieces we're gonna be working with. So to monitor our batteries, I have this right here. This is the TBS Electrics Expert Pro HV. This is a battery monitoring system that will tell me my input and output amperage, the current voltage of the battery pack, an estimated percent of the battery pack. It's a really nice little system that I can mount on the dash and monitor my batteries with. To go along with the battery monitor, I also have this. This is a one to five prescaler. And what a prescaler does is it makes it so I don't have to run high voltage cables under the dash to the display because that's dangerous and I don't wanna do that. What this does is it divides the voltage by five creating a much more bearable and safe voltage to run underneath the dash. And then inside of the battery monitor, it'll multiply the voltage by five. So this divides it by five, this will multiply it by five, which will give us an accurate voltage reading without having to run high voltage underneath the dash where my legs are so I don't die. The prescaler is currently mounted to this shunt. A shunt is basically a way to measure the amp draw of a system. However, I'm not going to be using this shunt because the Electrek already has a shunt built into it and I could just program the display to work with any shunt that I want. So I'm going to be using the old Electrek shunt and not this really nice new one. I'll find another use for this really nice shunt. But uh, yeah, let's start getting stuff mounted under the hood and then we'll work on running it to the dash. Now you guys can see a nice view of under the hood. You can see our big red Anderson here, which is where our main power comes from, from the battery pack. The Electric actually used an Anderson connector from the factory, although it wasn't red. I decided to upgrade to red because red is cool. These are the BMS wires that run from the battery pack. And now we just need to mount the uh, MCU. And I'm just going to go very simply, and I'm going to mount the MCU right here. And to mount it, I'm just going to use a few screws and uh, drill it right into the fiberglass. So let me get this properly measured and lined up, and we'll get this installed right there. 
Now that I have this nice and solidly mounted, I need to figure out where I want to run these orange and yellow cables. They need to go into IPOA and IMOA. So uh, let me figure out how I want to route, route these wires and then get them plugged in. This is just a temporary situation for now, um, but this is how I'm going to run these wires. So now I'm going to cut these to size and we're going to get them plugged into this connector right here. And there we go. Those cables are now wired into the MCU. So going into the MCU, we need two different connections. We need the 12 volt power from ground and 12 volt. And then we need the KSI, which stands for key switch on, which is basically a line that's a positive that runs from the ignition relay, which happens to be right here. That's the ignition relay. So let's first get it wired up to the standard 12 volt circuit, and then we'll get it wired up to this relay here so that it turns on when the car turns on. And as soon as I've done that, I've realized that uh, they actually include this really nice twisted black and red wire. So uh, I am actually gonna switch to this because it's a perfect length and uh, it looks a lot nicer. So uh, let me quickly switch over to that. All right, so now I have the power wires just connected to my desktop 12 volt power supply. And what we should see is when I turn on that power supply, this light should blink green and then red, indicating that this is getting power, but it's going into sleep mode. So three, two, one, perfect. Now let's wire the key switch input to our contactor right over here. This is gonna be a white wire going into the third input. To show you how this contactor briefly works, it's basically just an electromagnetic that when the car is turned on, it pushes this tab down. And what this tab does is it connects this side of the contactor with this side of the contactor. To show you this, I have my multimeter right here and it will beep whenever there's continuity between two points. So when the contactor is open, you can see we have no continuity, listen, no beep. But as soon as I push this down, you can see that we connect the two sides of this contactor. So basically that means we'll be getting power from here to here when the car is turned on. What that means is I am going to have the key switch input come from this terminal right here. There we go. Now when the key is turned on, we'll get this to click down and we'll get power to this. So let's demonstrate this real quick. Well, it wouldn't be an electric project if something didn't go wrong and uh, something has gone wrong. For some reason, um, no power is actually getting to the contactor here, neither to the magnet nor across the bases here. I've checked the fuses uh, to no avail, so I am gonna go ahead and do some diagnosing. This is, this is pretty standard for an electric. This is not surprising. I'll be back. All right, I'm happy to report that I have fixed the issue. So let me explain what went wrong. Um, so what I did was I traced the wires back under the hood and I crawled around under the dash for a while and figured out where these wires went to. And I figured out that if we look down in here, we have this connector right here. This connector is a diagnostic cable for the motor, which gives us motor temps and uh, RPM uh, information and all the important information that we need uh, from the motor. I had this unplugged, which caused the car to go into a state of non-drivability, which meant that the contactor wouldn't close. But now when I turn on my power supply, you can see the contactor clicks on because I, I do have the key on the inside of the car on. That took longer than it should have. Um, but yeah, that contactor works now. I figured out the issue. Let me wire up the MCU so I can show you what's supposed to happen. Okay, well, before I show you what's supposed to happen, let me actually wire this correctly. This isn't where I need to be wired to. I actually need to be wired to right here. That's where the 12 volts come from. So all I need to do is just put this right here. So let me do that real quick. Now, finally, after way too much time, I can show you what's actually supposed to happen. Let me turn on my DC power supply. You can see that the uh, MCU goes into sleep mode. Now, if I walk around to the car and I step on some things and I turn the key, you can hear the relay click and you can see the green light come on on the MCU. This means that everything is working good in the battery pack and that the car is officially on and ready to go. Look at that. Wow, engineering. So next up, we have this cable right here. This is a cable that lets my laptop communicate with the MCU. 
and I want this to be a permanent feature. So I want to run this cable from the MCU under the dash up through the glove box so that I can run diagnostics on this car from inside the car whenever I need to. So uh, let me quickly run these cables and then I'll show you what that looks like. So this is really cool. As far as I'm aware, this is going to be the first time ever that an Electrek technically is connected to a laptop. All I gotta do is come over here, let me open my glove box, grab my diagnostic cable, run it to my serial port here, and it's USB, so we flip it a few times. Then I'm gonna load up my Electrek profile here, open that up, and I guess I should uh, actually turn on the car first. So, turn on the car, you can hear the contactor. Let's open Putty. Let's load up the electric. And here we are. This is the serial window for my electric. I can do show cells. And look at that. We can connect to our electric with the laptop. I know it's technically just connected to the battery pack, but this is still really cool being able to sit in my electric with a cable coming out of the dash and being able to read data from my electric. This is so cool. I'm so happy about this, this is awesome. All right, now that we have uh, most of the MCU wired up, um, we're gonna move on to something I, I think is gonna be a little bit more challenging. We're gonna install the charger. This involves also adding the J1772 port to the front of the car. As far as I know, this is gonna be the first time an electric has ever had a J1772 charge port. Let's get this installed. So we have this weird camera angle here, um, but that's just so I can show you exactly where we're gonna mount the charger. This is actually the exact same spot where the factory charger was mounted, and it just so happens that the factory holes line up perfectly with our brand new charger. Um, first, there's this peel on the back. I don't know why they have this, but uh, real quick. Oh, this isn't as satisfying as I thought it would be. Oh, it's tearing. There we go. I had to drill the holes just a little bit bigger so that they would fit. But now, these should just go right on. It's amazing. It fits right onto the factory mounts. That's so cool. Let me get these bolts on. So for this next step, we now need to come down to the front bumper, which is hanging off slightly. It's just kind of temporary for right now so I can actually get this run. We need to install our J7072 port. And this goes right under here. Um, this will, we do need to do a little bit of modification to this later, but for now I'm just worried about running the cable. Let me shove all that through here. And you might be able to see that I have already drilled the holes for this so I can get it mounted. And I am actually going to mount this upside down. This will just make it easier at charging stations to, to uh, plug it in. So uh, this is gonna be mounted upside down and I will drill in those holes in a little bit. Uh, right now I'm just gonna leave this temporary. You can see that when this closes, the license plate doesn't go fully up. The way I'm gonna fix this is I'm just gonna add a spacer down here to the license plate to push it out just a little bit further so that it doesn't get stuck on the J7072 port. Now I need to run it through a hole that's right behind here that'll come up through there. Right, so now we have our AC cables run and we have our proximity and our pilot pins run. These two go to the MCU and then the AC goes directly into the charger. Uh, they go here. So I'm gonna get those quickly wired up and I'm not gonna do it on camera because it's boring. Here you can see, for the first time ever, an Electrek charging on a J1772 port. And for the not the first time ever, you can see that I forgot to hit record on my audio. One of these days I'll get it figured out, but that day is not today. So now it's time to start wiring up the shunt, which is uh, this thing here. This is a shunt that came with my display, and this is advertised to be a 1000 amp shunt. But what confuses me is this is the shunt from the Electrek from the factory. And this is a 200 amp shunt. I feel like the 1000 should be bigger than the 200. I don't know, but I'm using this one because this one will work with the factory electric display and will keep the factory gauges continuing to work as they did from factory. So uh, yeah, no 1000. We're using the 200 amp shunt. So let's get this wired up.
So now I'm moving to the inside of the car where I'm replacing the main battery monitoring unit with my new display. This is because the battery monitoring unit never worked. And this is going to be much better for actual usability. Down in here, you can see this is where you would normally hook up the positive batteries. Um, but in the stock battery pack, the fuse was in the pack. So I'm actually going to install a fuse right here instead to support my new pack. So let's install that fuse real quick. And here's me installing the brand new fuse. I was going to do it as a time lapse, but it felt too short. So uh, yeah, fancy new fuse, blah, blah, blah. Here we go. It's now time to get into scary time. We're going to start playing with some high voltages. This is a connector that will connect our battery pack to the rest of the electric. I just made it. Isn't it beautiful? Oh boy. Let's put it in the car. So this connector just connects to the shunt that we installed and the fuse that we installed. It's as simple as that, and all electronics will run through these two things for safety and for monitoring. It is now time to hook up the prescaler, but uh, they didn't like give me a way to mount this. So I think I'm just going to glue it here with like hot glue so it can come off pretty easily. But like, yeah, they didn't really give me much options for mounting. All right, as soon as I connect these two Anderson connectors, we should see the screen come on. Uh, nothing is currently connected in the system, so there shouldn't be any current flowing, but we should see that display come on. Still, even though I know everything is good, it is still a little scary doing this part. So, let's just get it over with. Is the screen on? Nice. The car is connected to the main battery pack, loosely, but it is. Let me go through and program this thing, and then uh, I'll be back. So I've gone ahead and programmed this display, and uh, so you can see we can measure our voltage, 98.5, and if I check on my laptop, I can see that that is almost exactly correct. Then we can go here. This is gonna show us our amp draw, so if we're regening or using power, this will show up here using the factory shunt that we set up earlier. This is the amp hours used. So um, the amount of power that we've drawn out of the battery pack during our drive. And this is the state of charge. And obviously it's not correct at the moment. You can see down here that there's a blinking thing that says synchronize. And what that means is I need to charge the battery pack all the way to 100% and then discharge it to 20%. And that'll calibrate this entire display and it will give it accurate readings. Um, this is just the uptime, how long I've been driving, and of course our voltage. So yeah, it's a pretty nice display. I've also configured it so that the backlight is always on because uh, from the viewing angle of the driving position, uh, if the backlight isn't on, it's really hard to see. So this light stays on at all times uh, while the car is driving. I think it looks pretty good. I mean, obviously it's not factory, but I think it's a, a good little system that we got going right here for monitoring our battery's health. So yeah. Um, oh, I should also mention, this, can ha this has an expansion module that I have right here that uh, allows me to connect to it via Bluetooth from my phone so I can monitor the car from my phone. I'll get this hooked up and calibrated later. So now for every Electrex owner's favorite part of the car, and the thing that I've done way too many times is installing the motor controller. The controller is essentially a 70 pound metal brick full of transistors, wires, and contactors, all made by a company in Chicago called Solec. This is the original controller, and uh, it sucks. It's, it's huge, it's heavy, and it's really difficult to install, but I've done it enough times that I'm an expert. So uh, now we can get it all wired up and the car can drive. So this is not an issue that I've ever encountered before. For some reason, whenever I connect the main battery pack, the main relay turns on despite the key not even being in the ignition. And I don't know what's causing that. So the main contactor is actually inside the controller and it's just turning on itself. And I don't know why. So, I'm gonna look into it and I'll be back. So I've kind of figured out the issue a little bit. There is a purple wire that connects to the controller and that's the high voltage connect cable. So when that's connected to the positive terminal of my battery pack, the controller turns on. In my two plus two, there's a contactor that controls whether the purple wire is connected or not. In this car, there's no such thing as that contactor. 
and I don't know how it worked before. I just don't remember how it worked before, but there was never a contactor for that purple wire in this car. So I'll add one, but I don't have the part right now. But what I do have is, give me a second, is this. This is an emergency high voltage cutoff switch, and I was gonna install it in the car anyway. So I'm gonna install this, and uh, for the moment, that's gonna be my ignition. I'm gonna install it now. All right, now everything should be okay. I have the kill switch wire in here. All you gotta do is flip it on, and we should hear the motor controller turn on. So let's do that. Controllers on. The um, the um, transformer inside of it got a little loud. So let me uh, let me see what's going on with that. So I figured out what the issue is, and it actually has to do with the uh, throttle box, which is just two potentiometers in there. One of the potentiometers must just be a little bit off. So after the field weakens at the beginning of the ignition sequence, uh, it thinks the pedal is just slightly being pressed, which just applies some voltage to the motor. I can fix it, and it's not a big deal. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is uh, fix some of these structural issues, and then we'll take it for a drive. All right, so I'm ready to do the first driving test. I'm a little excited, but uh, I'm mostly scared. Because uh, if if it doesn't work, I'm going to be very upset. But uh, let's turn the key. Everything's looking good. All right, I have the car in reverse. I'm just going to tap the. I'm going to tap the accelerator. It works. Oh my gosh. Let's go for a drive, I guess. When I bought this car four years ago, I knew nothing about electric vehicles. I barely knew what a battery was. So to be at this point in time and being able to actually drive this car as I've always wanted to drive it on a lithium pack that I made, it's, it's just such an incredible feeling and it's so surreal to me. And I know I'm being touchy-feely and all that stupid stuff, but this really is a bit emotional for me. This car has defined my life to where I am right now. It's the reason I'm an engineering student. It's the reason why I love cars so much. And it's so cool to finally be able to drive this car and not be afraid of it overheating and breaking down and exploding. It drives so well in the lithium system. We took it down to Taco Bell. We took it to a game store. Everyone was looking at everyone with pictures with it. It was just such a fun experience. And I'm so glad that I've gotten this opportunity to work on this car and get it to where it is today. Alright, well that's going to be it for this video. I know it was a little bit boring, but uh, it was really hard to make this entertaining. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please consider subscribing. 
there's been a project that I've been looking forward to for no joke four years. So the fact that it's finally working and finally something that I get to drive, I don't show it, but I'm extremely excited about it. Um, in the future, uh, the next step of this project is going to be adding climate control. So that's AC and heating, both for myself and also for the batteries and the motor. So active cooling, active heating, and also a uh, comfort feature for me. I'm going to run it through the standard vents that the um, hair dryer runs through. Um, but that's my, that's the next plan in this project. And then after that, and I know this is controversial, and I'm going to get some angry comments about it, but I am getting it painted and reupholstered. I don't like patina. Um, but I am working with a shop in the Springs that's going to do it exactly as it was from factory. All the stickers are going to be the exact same color, the exact same size. Everything is going to be exactly as it was from factory, including the interior. It's going to look great. It's going to look like it was supposed to from factory. I know some people are going to be mad about that, but I don't like patina, and it's my car. So, screw you. If you guys enjoy my content, I also have another YouTube channel where I play video games because cars are the only thing I do. It's called Television Soup. You can find me on threads at Declan Cav. You can find me on TikTok at Declan Cav. And uh, I think that's all my social medias. If you want to see more about the electric, you can go to my website, uniquemobility.org, or you can follow my Instagram page at Electric Garage. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video. Love you. Bye.